The show is made possible in part by its supporting sponsors. Blue Otter Power Group of Companies, Joe's Discount Tire, and AskGuy.ca. Uh, people's homes. Uh, I keep saying that every week. I enjoy it because, uh, it, well, it helps me get a little connected mm-hmm. more to the people that I'm talking with. And today, author, poet, and adventurer, I think I would call <laughs> you as well, Lynn Tate. Thank you so much for having me in your home oh, here today. Oh, well, thanks for coming in. Yeah. And thank you for inviting me to this, speak with this you. Is, I, I think this is, I got thinking about this the other day when I reached out to you. Mm-hmm. And I thought, boy, this is long overdue because... We've known each other for a few years, mm-hmm. um, known of each other, yes. I think, in the beginning, and then we yep. kind of got to know each other through mutual motorcycle travels, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Both you and your husband, uh, well, he, he's the, the, yes. the, the driver. Yes. And you're the passenger? I'm the passenger slash photographer at the back. Oh, behind. okay. Yeah. You're taking pictures while you're on the motorcycle? Yes. That takes some coordination, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> sort of, but... Um, yeah, it was that or go nuts behind him because uh, we, when we go on trips, uh, they only stop to go to the bathroom right. <laughs> <laughs> and to get fuel, and it's a it gets long. It can be for yeah. a couple and hundred kilometers. I, yeah, and I start um, thinking about every decision I've made in my life since I was four years old, and so I'm not a pleasant person. If I do that <laughs> and I don't talk to anybody, I'm just in a world of my own. And I thought, well, that can't happen. So I had to find something to do. Right. So I spent the first trip that that happened on the trip home. I thought, what can I do back here? And I came up with photography. Nice. Yeah. You said four years old. Is that your is that your first memory? Is it Not that I know, but I just came up oh, with, just came with, up a, with it. Yeah. Can, wh- yeah. What is your first memory? Do you have one? Have you ever thought about uh, that? <laughs> have I ever thought about that? The first one when you said that came to mind is having a fit because uh, I lived in an apartment building with my grandmother and my mother, and my mother worked, and my grandmother didn't like letting me out, of, even though we lived on the ground floor. Right. She could see me at any time. We, it was quite a huge uh, front uh, to the apartment building, and there was other kids my age, so my mother decided she was going to get um, one of those um, things you stick in the ground, a big hook, and then you you have a heart. Yeah, and she's going to harness like me. a leash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what she was going to do, <coughs> and uh, yeah, that didn't happen. I had a fit, but yeah, I remember that because I knew if I went out like that. The kids would just well, you'd, hound me and tease, tease me. You. Yeah, They'd treat you like yeah. like a dog on a leash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that didn't happen. Right. And where was that? You, that was you, in Willowdale. Willowdale. Yeah. Yeah. And how long uh, did you you grew up there? Until um, I was nine, and then my mother remarried, and I end up being an Air Force brat and lived in Trent, Ontario. Oh wow! On the Air Force base. Yeah. What was that like? Um. It was different. Uh, suddenly, I had three stepbrothers and a stepsister right. after being an only child for nine years. Mm. So that was kind of cool because um, they were rather. My mother was rather oppressive, sort of be seen and not heard. He oh, didn't. Okay. Uh, and and I ended up in the same deal, except I at least had four other kids there that was in the same boat right. as I was in. Um, and we had a, a, a field and woods behind the house. Mm. So that made it we could play baseball, on the, like hockey on the street, oh, yeah. and we could play baseball and football and everything else behind. And, uh, and they always needed an extra person. And even though the youngest were twins, 13-year-old boys, um, I learned really fast, you better keep up. Right. Or they're not going to ask you to join. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And so they did, used you, to, did you keep up? Yeah. In yeah. fact, they used to fight over who was oh, going to yeah. have me on their who team. Who gets when? Yeah. Eh? Nice. Yeah. Did, uh, um, growing up, uh, did you stay in touch with them or still in touch uh, with them? Act, or? Um, not very often. Yeah. They And they live all over Canada. Yeah. Oh, wow. I hear from them occasionally. 
but uh, no, I left home, at, and I left home, they all left home uh, because of their age. They were somewhat, somewhat older than I was, so I was the only one left. And by that time, my stepfather had retired and we were living in <laughs> Richmond Hill, oh, wow. which was just okay. horrific for me. What was, what was why? Um, I went to a high school that had 2,000 students. Oh, wow. That's about, you know, I mean, that's almost how, much, how many people were in the, the uh, PMQs in, mm -hmm. in Trenton. I mean, like, it was just, it was crazy. So uh, I didn't know a soul. Mm. I didn't, you know, suddenly you're, you're going to a, a very small town to uh, a, quite a metropolis, really. Right. I mean... And, uh, and how old were you when you went to Richmond? Um, Richmond Hill, how old was I? About 13, 14. I oh, went okay. to grade grade 10 there. Yeah. I went so to you... grade 9 in Trenton and then uh, grade grade 10 in... Yeah, in uh, so you had to push Richmond through that Hill. then? Was it like, you, like, I wouldn't think... Now, of course, we change as we grow, mm -hmm. but knowing you the way I do now, yeah. I wouldn't think you'd have a problem saying hello to people. Was that uh, Oh, gosh, I was... I Anxiety... Social anxiety was terrible. Going into the, the cafeteria for me every day uh, was horrible. And I had a couple of people, a couple of girls that were uh, on me uh, constantly. Like bullying? Yeah. Yeah. How did you handle it? Oh, that? yeah. Um, not very well, actually, I guess. Um, but uh, I left home at a, at a young age. How old? I think I was 16. Wow, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, because... Uh, yeah, is that because you knew everything and you mm -hmm. wanted to go out and um, start? Or was there different um, reasons? Oh, uh, living in that house was not pleasant okay. for me. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, if the of, rest of the kids were there, if I'd had other brothers and sisters yeah. still there, it would have been because we but always were, had like each said, other. Yeah, they were gone because of their Oh, yeah. And like if one of us got grounded, we all hung out. <laughs> like, no, you know, so. Oh, darn. I'm uh, grounded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So 16 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can relate to that one. Yeah. Um, but 16 years old at a time, well, in, in a city. Mm -hmm. Did you, you moved out and stayed in Richmond or where did you Oh, uh, I did at first and I worked um, at Texas Instruments was one of my really? first jobs. Oh. Uh, uh, first was the hospital in the kitchen and that didn't last long. Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, I didn't mind the, that was piece work, piecemeal work, you know, whatever it's called now, I don't know. Um, but uh from there, I I uh, decided to go downtown Toronto, and wow. uh, so I lived in uh, what is notoriously called Rochdale oh, yeah. for a summer. And then where did I live? I, I lived around Toronto and then came to Sarnia for a New Year's party. All right. And I'd had a boyfriend that was from Sarnia that was going to high school. Um, in Richmond Hill too and so I came to visit him he's the one that invited me All right. and so and I stayed I'm staying you stayed. So. <laughs> did, you, did you move in with him or yeah did, yeah and oh, uh, and that was uh, that's quite an adventure mm -hmm. at yeah. 16 years old yeah. I mean I think about uh, I, I, I I've stayed in Sarnia and mm -hmm. never left so I grew up knowing you know the different economies that yeah. happened here and, and the uh, and cost of living and all that stuff mm -hmm. boy we don't want to get into that right now but um, but compared to a bigger city was was coming to Sarnia I guess having a boyfriend would help with some yeah uh, social anxiety yeah, and, yeah. And, and did he know people here that oh, he yeah. could introduce to yeah so? yeah as as well as um, uh, I didn't don't even know what I was gonna say there um, it was kind of strange because it, it reminded me sort of Trenton mm. where, uh, everybody wanted to know your business. I thought oh, it yeah. had sort of a small town mentality sure. to it sure. and I've learned to embrace that. Yeah. Um, kind of turn it around. Yeah. Yeah. It's more a community thing than a nosiness i can relate to that yeah. you know again being from starting in my life mm -hmm. there was a time I, I felt the same way quite honestly and now i i, I mean well years now see a community 
Um, how would you describe, let's talk about Sarnia, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you came here and stayed yeah, here for yeah. multiple reasons, but how would you describe Sarnia or, or Sarnia Lambton? Um, well, I'm not sure if it wasn't for the employment opportunity mm -hmm. for my husband, I'm not sure we'd be here. No. Uh, when we first got married, he was actually trying to get in the labor union in Toronto. He, and he really enjoyed the bigness of it. Okay. And I think he sort of felt he could be more uh, open himself uh, to different um, experiences okay. there um, and job opportunities, but it just didn't happen. Yeah. So we stayed here. Um, and but, uh, It's hard because as a writer for me, I have to go at least an hour away for any readings or book launches. Right. Um, it's not always conducive to go three hours to read 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then yeah. stay overnight it's not and you're not getting paid. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. So yeah. yeah is so that what you've always difficult. done is, is you're an author? Is that been I've your, been, your I've, living? I started writing at a really young age mm -hmm. and then I started journaling. Um, I seem to have had a, a bit of a a calling for writing from grade four and on. And then um, I started journaling and my mother found my journal and that did not go over well. Uh, so <laughs> I had to, but I had to Because she didn't like what you wrote? Did yeah, exactly. It? Yeah. Wow. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. And she didn't like my opinions. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like I was doing things I shouldn't and she just found out about them right. through through the the journal it was my opinions especially about family life that mm. didn't uh, go over well don't tell anybody about that yeah, yeah those yeah, things yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. so um but i still had to get all this stuff out so i started writing poetry and she thought that was wonderful but she didn't know what the heck i was talking about right or re or writing about so um all she wanted to do was brag that her daughter was writing and writing poetry. Right. But around the 70s, uh, late se uh, mid 70s, I started um, uh, publishing in magazines and journals. Yeah. And then um, uh, I stopped. When did I stop? I stopped for a while and got into uh, singing barbershop with oh, uh, yeah. the Seaway Sounds. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were something group. that, yeah, they were called something different at the time. But then we went international. We got the Americans uh, with us. So yep. it was an internet and we called ourselves Seaway Sounds. Yeah. Yeah. I forget what they're, they're still around. Seaway oh, Sounds yeah. Here, yeah. Yeah. So I sang bass nice. for them. And this, uh, this uh, um, uh, you know, being an author mm -hmm. and, a, and a poet, and a singer, um, I, what first got you to say, I want to write, I want to journal? Like, was that like, was that a release for you? Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah. yeah, yeah, because uh, it, very oppressive yeah. uh, environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once the rest of the family went, the brothers and sisters, uh, it was just you me lost and support. it was, I just couldn't handle yeah. it. Do you, re do you remember the first thing you wrote about or, or the first poem? The, the first thing you wrote down um, and, and, and said, I need to get this out. Um, yeah, poem. Oh, one of the first poems I wrote was this stupid poem about somebody, uh, a hunter, um, laying, uh, sort of leaning up against a rock, okay. looking out over a cliff and not knowing that there was a, a cougar above him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the cougar was just about to pounce and he moved and the, and the, the cougar went over the cliff. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. Stealth approach. How we would called. react differently if we knew yeah. the cougar was behind us instead of standing yeah. calm. Yeah, right. it, was a, and it was called stealth approach. <laughs> right. I can't believe right. I remembered that. That's great. Yeah. And then you talk about uh, magazines. Mm -hmm. Boy, how things have changed, how mm -hmm. we publish books and, and, you know, with the inter interweb mm -hmm. out there now yeah. and everything. Were you were you um, quickly to adapt to modern technology and 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 how or did you have to adapt to being able to put your works out there using the internet or? Um, yeah, I, 
we got a computer fairly early from Rob's work. Yeah. They gave them a bunch of money to go okay. buy computers right. from uh, Sarnia Computer. Oh, I remember, remember that. that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So we all got in it. Got involved pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. What would you say is um, the biggest challenge in what you do as a, as a, as a writer? The biggest challenge. I don't know. Like you know, I, I you always hear like writer's block it's getting um, started. Oh, I tend to if I get writer's block, I find ways around it. And also, I think if I if I'm not writing, I'm usually doing something else, like I'm photography. Right. Okay. Um, and I do a lot of workshops, so if I get kind of stuck on topics or uh, I'll start looking at form, maybe structure, I'll, I'll do workshops. Um, I've spent from 2018 till now with done, doing so many workshops with limited participants. So it's yeah. not like you've got, you know, 40 people or right. more. That there's or maybe 12, 12 of us and webinars. Um, so that's really, really, really. And helped. what are these about? Is it are, like are any of them about like uh, how to write a book? Um, no, some of them is just generative uh, writing. They give you prompts. Uh, maybe the, you'll get a lesson on a certain form or structure, okay. or they'll want a certain topic, that sort of thing. And and so it, it sort of focuses you to work. And you've got either depending on the workshop, if you if you've got one that's a few weeks. You usually have a week to write something, okay. but I have done ones where it's only a week, so you're expected to write deadlines. Yeah, like, yeah. Get it done. But also, when I can't write, a lot of times it means my style. Something's changing. Oh, really? In my life or my writing life, <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. I, what would, so I go I, with it. I asked that question because uh, uh, many people, including myself, mm -hmm. are like. Uh, I've been asked when you're going to write a book. I've I've said to myself I want to write a book, mm -hmm. and of course with technology, you know, you can self-publish mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But um, uh, what, what would be the huge difference? Be, like, because you have a publisher for your book, yeah, books. Um, how is that compared to, uh, especially someone like yourself mm -hmm. who's experienced writing now? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the big difference between having a publisher and self-publishing? Uh, you have to do all the work. You have to do all the the PR you've got, you're doing everything. Yeah. Um, that doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> uh, in some cases, it's not. Some writers um, and literary communities don't even really consider that very, um, I don't know the word. That's credible? Use. Yeah. Because yeah. anybody can do yep. it. Anybody can go online, yeah. type it up, and go to that, yeah. and there it goes. Yeah. And when it, thank yeah. those online services for that. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's more credible to have mm -hmm. a publisher because yeah. they believe in you. I guess is is the, oh, really yeah. the bottom line for and that. And some some of us they don't have just had, take anybody on. Yeah, and some of us have had to to rewrite the the draft of the book um, numerous times yeah. before it even gets taken. If it gets taken at all, like you, you a lot of times you you might get five, ten, fifteen or more rejections before right. it's accepted. Yeah. How do so, you deal with rejection in this business? Oh, I don't have much trouble with it. Yeah. You just go, I, yeah, okay, just, what yeah, do I got to do to fix it? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, sometimes you scratch your head wondering what their problem is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, yeah, exactly. You know how much time I put into this? Yeah, and what's really? wrong with it? How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Then you go yeah. in the corner and... Yeah, and, and, and there's been times where what's happened is I've, um, I've got the magazine that I didn't get into. Oh, really? Okay, and I get the magazine, and I, and I look at it, and I go, oh, thank God I didn't get into it, because mm. I'm not impressed with the work and that's, that's the in there. Magazine, yeah, maybe. or I'm so impressed with the work, I'm like, I didn't, no wonder they said no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, I'm not it's, that good? <laughs> well, no, it's not that, but didn't this stuff it, is really good, yeah. yeah. So it, it becomes a matter of, huh, what do they choose, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I could see where mine would would uh, hate the word rejection, but where they'd say thanks, but no thanks. It's all a part of yeah. like 
life in general. Mm -hmm. You're going yeah. to get. Did, did you? Were you always good with rejection from the like the first time you ever got rejected, or was that a another process in life where you're like, okay, I, I don't like that, but this is a part of the game. Um, at first, I was rather shocked that I was getting anything accepted. Mm. You didn't think you were good no. enough? Was um, that a self belief thing? Um, I don't know. I guess so. I didn't, when I started out, I didn't do any revision much or editing. And oh. then I met, uh, I, I got into a, a writing group in 75, I think it was, 1975, with um, Norma Westlinder and Carmen and, and Hope Morritt and, oh. and Peggy. And I was just the baby. They'd been together for years, yeah. just years before I, before I showed up. And, uh, yeah, they were all my mentors, and Peggy especially was like, uh, get it all down and then go back and write the poem. And, or, and so there was a lot of, okay, you can get rid of these 60 lines. Like, you can get right. rid of, like, she could really, yeah, she's, she taught me how to how edit to and, to revi uh, and to revise. I've always thought that would be the hardest thing for yeah. a, a, an author, film mm -hmm. editor, um, not what to keep in, what to leave out. Sometimes it th that and, is oh, tough. Oh, I really want that. Yeah. In there. yeah, yeah. But sometimes you can take that and and do something else with it. Mm -hmm. So that makes it easier. Right. Is that an emotional thing to do, editing? I love it. That's sort of. It's like I have a puzzle. Really? Yeah, I have a puzzle. Interesting. And so, um, how do I? How do I fix it. this? How do I piece it together? What belongs? What doesn't belong? Uh, yeah, so it's 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 rather interesting. And, Have you, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, and sometimes it takes uh, even with this book, um, there's things I would change. <laughs> really? Oh this yeah, book, yeah. And this oh, is yeah. your latest. Yeah. How many books this have is, you published? This is, everybody seems to think that I've had a whole bunch, even other but poets. But this isn't your first. No, yeah, no. it is. It's really? my oh, first I, full I, collection. I yeah. That. I don't know why. I, I guess it's Every, just the way you lot. present yourself, I think. I, You're a distinguished author. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm a lot of, I've been in the business a long time. So I, I, someone says, you don't know really that you're kind of known. And I said, no, I don't. That's how I've always yeah, been. Yeah. And, um, and a photographer. Yeah. And, um, you but in the, in the Canadian community, um, a lot of them, uh, of writers thought, what? This is your first collection? I thought you've been writing books for years. And it's, no. Wow. No, I've been, I, I love write, um, sending out, writing and sending out to magazines and journals. Yeah. I love that. The fact that there's, they don't necessarily know you. Uh, and there's just, it's another puzzle in a way because there's only so much space in right. this, in, yeah. There's only so They're much limited. space, and, and you'll either get in or you won't. And, uh -huh, they picked yeah. You break it, you buy it, right, is the name of this book. Um, I haven't had a chance to dive into it yet, but I'm like, what, what's the theme here? You break it, you buy it. Um, well, the, it has to do really with the gold, with the Japanese uh, mending of pottery mm. that is really sort of a, a healing uh I have something on Facebook about it, um, and it's more about healing and and uh, making something that was broken look more beautiful and better than it, it than it started out, oh, perhaps. Wow. You growth. know, through growth through transformation. But a lot of um, it's I, what I thought I was writing was about disconnection. There's a lot of, uh, of poems on toxicity. Uh, bullying, um, hmm. uh, disconnection, uh, my relationship with my mother. Um, but w I realized when I started writing it that um, I'm not just telling my story. I'm telling, like, I, I, even the other day, somebody was telling, saying to me how, you know, they got tired of, they're so tired of hearing about people and, what, and the great relationship they had with their mother. Right. And... And she says, it's so nice to, to have somebody that I know and that writes about 
a, a relationship that was not, was not good with their mother. And a lot of it, there's not a lot of this out it. there. Yeah, it, yeah not everybody exactly. has that with mom or dad, Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is very uh, heartfelt then, I guess, in a it way. Is, you could say. It is, but it's it's not just my story as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah. But I've realized, once it got published, I realized more. it's more not about disconnection, but more about uh, pushback and, and being resilient, mm. you know, and healing. And I found when I wrote, after I wrote the book, that I was more empathetic to... Um, to the negatives, How negative so? people. Mm. Um, well, I realize a lot of them, you know, hurt people hurt. Yeah. Fair enough. We've all got, yeah. I mean, we've all got yeah. some good in us. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the ones we don't like, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's some well, good well, in there. even, right? you know, evil people mm -hmm. have somebody bugging them. Right, <laughs> you right, know, right, they, yeah. You know, it doesn't, it, you know, yeah, it just it came doesn't. came from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, it, 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 you know, we've all got that someone that that's a a, a pain in our butt. <laughs> you know, she's being polite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. So you became <laughs> you became uh, resilient then from, from I, the relationship with your mother. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I'm not. I don't get so. Um, so I don't think I'm, or I'm hoping that I I don't have quite a, a knee jerk reaction to. Mm. Um, um, some of the negatives in my life or people that come into my life and want to create problems for right. me. Um, You're not triggered the same way you used to be? Um, yeah, I would have, I just would have, oh, there was a time I would have flipped and been resentful for years and I've done that and it didn't get me anywhere. It's not and healthy. then, yeah, and then I watched somebody to sort of do that to me and I thought, did you not learn anything from watching what happened right. to me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it wasn't, yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, but, um, I also learned that if somebody's going to, um, create a pro try to create a problem for you, whether it's a smear campaign or, or pointing a finger and saying you're this and you're that, if you know you're not, then there's no use getting yourself worked up yeah. about it. There's no use, um, feeling the need to get back at anybody about it. Um, to me, it's almost uh confessional on, <laughs> right. on their part yeah right you know so it, yeah so i i'm i'm hopeful that um because i haven't had much problems uh the last year or so two years so i'm hopeful that uh, um i have learned and that uh, yeah, I, I have it, less it, of a knee-jerk reaction because i am a, a knee-jerk kind of reaction yeah. person so uh yeah it's funny how we we've all heard that lesson like mm -hmm. don't worry, you know we tell our young mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. oh don't worry about what they said yeah sticks and stones yeah. may break by any yeah. bones but names yes mm -hmm. they do hurt mm -hmm. right yeah and uh, it's too bad that some of us don't learn the lesson yeah. sooner yeah in life but would you agree that a lot of times it's it's uh, uh, in our living environment that we're living in that that's almost how we learn it. Mm -hmm. Like, is that what it was for you as to, like, how did you hit the point of giving less of a crap? Um, during COVID, just really? before COVID. Mm -hmm. Why was just that? Just before. Um, I just, there was so much, even before COVID, I don't know why, but the fires in Australia and in California, oh, right. for some reason, I just had this feeling that every, before COVID, that everything was going to start falling apart. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if to the Trump business, if that wasn't part of it, uh, I was meeting, uh, I, I met a number of people that, that to me, um, were people to kind of stay away from, um, Toxic. yeah, I was, I was learning that just because you know, somebody <laughs> for years doesn't make them your friend. Yeah. Um, but I also, I just. I don't know. I, I was, I paid attention. I saw people, uh, going off the, we were seeing true colors of people that you knew yeah, for a long time. Yeah, like and really you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, but also it was a matter of, I saw people panicking and I saw people uh, perhaps, um, maybe it's a matter of, I sometimes don't, I'm not always looking at, at people as 
they're nasty or they're mean or they're this right. or they're that. But the situation mm -hmm. that they've that they're in ha sort of um, has created that behavior. Um, uh, so it's more the situation than mm -hmm. the person. Yeah, you know. Maybe. So so. Well, but how we react to yeah. things too sometimes. Like, exactly. And, and we blame the government. They yeah. say we tend to go, yeah. oh, it's the government's fault. And government, and don't get me wrong, government does a lot of things we yeah. don't like. But it, at the end of the day, do you feel like we were pointing fingers too much? And are we still? Yeah, yeah. And people, and and I think COVID just scared the daylights out of everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and you didn't know. Yeah. What, what do you mean? What, what, what yeah. do you mean lockdown? Yeah. And if you're an extrovert, I mean, or you have children, or you have... Uh, parents that are alive but are old, you know, older yeah, yeah. and in, you know, it, it, there was just so much chaos. I was really grateful that my children were grown. Yeah. I couldn't have imagined looking after young children, yeah. the online yeah. thing, teaching online, learning online, like everything. My parents were mm -hmm. older, but so that was tough. Yeah. Um, did you, did you experience any of that? Like family um, like your parents, my parents, my parents had already passed. passed. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that wasn't an issue. Uh, Rob's, uh, mother was still alive and, and she did not die of COVID, but it was, uh, uh, during COVID that she passed away. That's tough. Yeah. Um, but I did not, um, I'm introverted. I sort of, <laughs> um, Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know how you want to look at it, but um, I rather enjoyed it. And my husband, uh, Rob, said to me, I think you're going to have trouble um, adapting to yeah. no COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I was, yeah. I, See, I'm very extroverted, and, and yeah. Jennifer thought I'd have a problem. And honestly, I was like, wow, it's so peaceful. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was yeah. forced, like many, to slow down. Yeah. I found, you know, some uh, kind of stop, you know, like always that Ferris Bueller mm -hmm. thing. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. And yeah. that's what COVID did for me, yeah. fortunately. Well, Rob and I started doing a, a thousand word puzzles. Yeah, did you get to know each Not other word, a little bit more pieces, again? thousand piece puzzles, <laughs> a thousand word. A thousand piece. Um, yeah, and we did them together. We never did them apart. So we did cool. them together. And we had a great time doing that. Yeah. Uh, we're movies, TV. He yeah. started reading a bit because he was never much for reading. He was actually helping me with my poems, which was a was kind of a hoot. Yeah. Um, and I did so many. Uh, Zooming was my. I just loved it. I just right? enjoyed Zooming. <laughs> I'm in my own home. I'm relaxed. I'm yeah, comfortable. comfortable yeah. yeah, so I had no difficulty with that. Um, and I did a lot. I, I was blessed to be able to afford because they're rather expensive. And some of them were American, so it even upped the price more. But I did uh, workshops with some of the best poets in North America. Wow. So that was really cool. Is Rob, uh, how long have you been married? Uh, 47 years. Yeah, I, 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 sometimes that's a test for people. They're like, uh, <laughs> 47 years. Yeah. Well, 47. Was he, yeah. the, uh, is, is, was he the boyfriend that brought you to Sarnia? No. So different. Okay. No, right. no, it wasn't. And uh, 47 years. Yeah. The cliche question, what's the secret there? I don't know. Humor. Yeah, humor goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. Patience, probably. Humor. Um, yeah. Patience, humor. Uh, we always, um, we like a lot of the same things. Music, yeah. uh, movies, music, uh, comedy, uh, <laughs> you know, TV yeah. shows. Um, it took me 25 years to get him in the kitchen and now I can't get him out. Now he's in your way probably. No, in fact, no. yeah, I'm, I'm in his way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pardon me. Get out of my way. Yeah. Yes. My, my, I, I sit here. My wife I'm has peanut. no desire to have me in the kitchen. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of the peanut gallery. You're right, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I tell him, you know, you could, I, I'm more the, the spice I put, mm. I, I uh, test, taste, and oh, say, so, okay. yeah, you need a little more. You're the of this or that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is he um, a critic? 
to, to um, like yeah, a positive I'm, critic. Um, in fact, he did. He helped. I I used to never show him my poetry ever. Really? Why is that? I just didn't because he didn't. He wasn't yeah. much of a reader, right. so he didn't like sitting down and reading. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have the the patience for it at the time, and so. But I had nobody here. You know, around I couldn't go out, and I, I didn't have. Uh, um, though I had a, a so he was a forced workshop. to become a yeah. critic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had I had critiquing workshops, mm-hmm. but they're just twice a week or twice a month. So I wanted somebody in between that. So I would I started here read this, and he'd say, "Oh, you lost me here." Uh, do you really think you need this? Okay. And, and, yeah, and, and at first I was like, I'm not giving you these to you for you to be telling me what I should be doing, but that never stopped them. And then I started <laughs> realizing, oh my goodness, he's got a point here. I started Maybe paying I should attention. Listen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so I did. Yeah, well, um, a lot of traveling with you guys? Do, 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 do. We did before COVID. Oh, yeah. 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 Now it's, what's happened is we have all these places we want to go. And where do we start? <laughs> and, and we really hate, hate the airport experience. We oh, did wow. before COVID. That was a real bugaboo for us. Don't it's, like oh, that now? Yeah. And, and we still, you know, I mean, it's worse now than, than it was before COVID. Yeah. But uh, um, we put up with it. But we don't, it's like, oh, should we go here or there or here or there? But yeah, we did a, a fair bit of traveling. The last place we went was Newfoundland, and I had a conference. Oh, wow. I've I had never a, been there. I hear yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I had a poetry conference. Okay. There. Yeah. I've been to the East Coast, but uh-huh. I, I never made it that far. Yeah. Well, we flew in, mm-hmm. and I had a three day uh, writers' conference, League of Canadian Poets. So he just he had no trouble keeping himself busy. And in the evenings, he was with us, and they all loved him. So um, <laughs> he's a real likable guy. Yeah, he so, is. So yeah. So uh, um, I had decided when I was going to this conference that he might as well come with me, and we'll do it. And we'll rent a car and 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 spend. Have some fun again. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we did. We'd been to. A little, uh, we've been to Costa Rica. We were there for, I think, was it oh, close to nine weeks? How, oh, you must have liked, I want to go there. I, I keep trying yeah. to talk Jennifer into that one. Yeah, well, we had, we knew somebody that owned a, 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 a three condos there oh, okay. in, a, in a building, in, in a really nice, beautiful, uh, open concept building. It yeah. wasn't like a, it was only three floors. Okay. So you um, liked that experience? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what they wanted was us to stay six months right. because they had to get back to Canada because of, you know, you can only stay so yeah, long. You can only, right. right. And they wanted us to look after the place and play manager. Uh, and, but we, we couldn't stay that long and both of us had obligations, mm-hmm. but we were there from the end of April until we, the last week in April until the middle of June. Wow. That'd be me too. It's yeah. like if I'm going to Costa Rica, I don't want any responsibility. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just want to be here. But uh, um, was this a, an expat community or was yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it was that there was both the, uh, lo- the local, they call them Ticos, are they? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So uh, Canadians and yeah. Americans, so too. And, yeah. 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 And then uh, and we've been to the Bahamas, but. Um, that was a little island on the outer, the outer islands called Long Island, and it's only so many uh, kilometers long, and there's only like one major road. Oh, really? And when you get off the major road, a lot of times what you're running into is uh, uh, just a dead end mm. because the growth has just... Oh, it's, it's just yeah. taken over? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like when you go to what is considered the tourist spots, okay. you have to have a machete with you to get through, to, to wow. get to Let's the... go on vacation yeah. and take a machete. <laughs> What's this, sir? Well, it's a machete. I'm going over here. I, yeah. yeah, explain that. Interesting. Yeah. So I would imagine then with your traveling, just to switch gears mm-hmm. a bit now, 
uh, with your photography, you, yeah. that was an opportunity for you to pull the camera out and get oh, a lot yeah. of beautiful shots, right? Yeah, yeah. And we did a lot of traveling, of course, on the bike, mostly in the States. And, and right. that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So a huge, So uh, do you put that out there too, like the photography? Yeah, I, a lot of times I've, uh, I've uh, had stuff ex exhibited in uh, Bright's Grove oh, yeah, right. They're and great for that. Yeah. Lawrence House mm -hmm. and Cheeky Monkey. Yeah, oh, Cheeky Monkey. Yeah. I miss that place. Yeah, really, eh? Yeah, yeah. shout out to them for sure. They were around a long yeah. time. And uh, um, so how do you, like, there's a lot going on here with you, like between yeah. poetry, writing, photography, mm -hmm. the travel was in there. Um, how do you stay focused? I... Don't. <laughs> you don't? Okay. Are I you a squirrel? Are you, when are yeah, you a bit of a squirrel? I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I get easily distracted. Yeah. Very easily yeah. distracted. Uh, I lose my train of thought yeah. easily. Uh, even when I'm writing, a lot of times there's big... Uh, it's, the words aren't, won't come to me, mm. so I leave them blank until, I, until they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I got a pro when I read still, I have to yeah. actually read it a couple of times yeah. to, to get the picture of it. And, well, supposedly and, I have ADD, so yeah. and I w wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I think I, I yeah I get distracted. I'm same way. Like, yeah, Jennifer comes in and interrupts me. I'm like, right now, like really, you know? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. and then uh, trying to get back to it. But mm -hmm. that just I read somewhere that that means we're really smart, Lynn. That's yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You uh, so a type a type of photographer like landscape or oh well or are you to just me like my, just the picture oh goodness um, the the camera to me is a, just a tool yeah I love to get into photo photoshopping and Lightroom oh, is that right? and I have, have tons fun. of programs Topaz you name it I have all oh, these wow. where I do a lot of retouching playing around yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, um, that's a dedicated hobby or mm -hmm. profession however you're looking at it. i mean because there's a lot of work yeah i got a camera given to me through covid from mm -hmm. a friend thank you very much and i used it for a while once in a while i pick mm -hmm. it up and i just it, it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. right i mean I, yeah. if, if you're going to get into editing and stuff oh, i'm it, just it, taking the picture and going okay it's, yeah it's almost like writing a poem and sometimes it's mm. even worse because i will spend all day fiddling around with a with a with an image and then go nah <laughs> I just spent or, the whole or, day. Yeah, or I have 12 images all done differently and can't make up my mind which one to print. Right. Would you see a book about that in the future with photo your photography? Uh, no, no, I don't. But you never, You'd you never just can do tell. showings and galleries. And uh, yeah, like and, I, and I, I haven't been able to put the two together yet. It's almost like I haven't found my photo voice right. yet. Okay. So... Um, yeah, but I, I I love just playing around. Just a poem about mm -hmm. that picture. Oh, I have. I just wrote one called uh, "Why My Art Didn't Sell." Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's and I and the funny thing is the art's on my wall in my room. My my husband put it up. Um, there was a at the Lawrence House. The uh, theme was parks in Ontario, and I think it was with the. I'm a member of the Sarnia Photo Club, yep. so I think it was. Uh, Parks in Ontario, and I thought, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> like, uh. And I just kept picturing all these trees and flowers and, and lovely things. So I did um, a slide and uh, a swing that I uh, took the print, I took the picture during COVID. So they're right. all yellow tape oh, yeah. <laughs> and closed and this right. sort of thing. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Right. So the and, reminder. Yeah, and then what I did is I played with texture behind, so I made it kind of yucky looking behind yeah. and ominous and this sort of yeah. Like a virus or something. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I knew. It. So and I when I, when I did this, I thought this isn't going to sell, but I feel like doing this for me. There you go. Because I do That's sell right. rather well yeah. at uh, at the Lawrence House. Right. Um, so I thought. Nah, I'm doing this for me. But the the photos actually look quite charming on my wall, <laughs> even yeah. though. And I wanted to, you know, this is a time when uh, I don't want to forget there was COVID. Why is that? Uh, 
Well, it it changed everybody's lives. So it's so easy. Oh well, let's just pretend that didn't happen. One for and the history book. Yeah, and it, as well as you know, history repeats itself mm. if you learn nothing from history. Right, so, right. what would you say? Uh, was there a lesson in 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 the pandemic? Over all, like a general takeaway from it, or aside from just for you personally, do you think, like you say, you learn mm -hmm. from it? You know, what's there to learn from that? Oh, that we're going to run into critical times. Mm -hmm. This is not going. You know, COVID is sort of just a a little testing. I think. Ah. As or to the, our, yeah, you know. a test or let's say a major exam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Longest two weeks yeah. ever, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was the biggest thing you learned from it? Um, I'm hoping tolerance, but oh, yeah. but also I'm that I'm not too bad in a crisis. I just didn't. I sort of just sat back and and kept an eye on what's going on and and. I, I thought it, to panic gets me nowhere and you don't think correctly when you're panicked. And I yeah. just, yeah. You didn't have the knee jerk reaction to it? No, yeah. no, I didn't. And that comes from your experience. I, I well, I just find, um, I don't like being panicked. Right. And 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 I don't I don't like it. And I and I and also you get the real mob mentality. Everybody like lemmings. Everybody runs to right. the cliff, right? right? And that I find the that thing frightening. Thing. You know, a lot of times the majority isn't necessarily correct yeah. in where where they're going and what they're thinking. So I I yeah. When you panic, you don't think correctly, and you tend to join anything that you think keep will keep you sane and uh, I don't I don't like I like to have my my wits about me when right. everyone else is losing theirs losing their you know yeah and and, yeah. and if everybody's calm just slow down if everybody's please. calm then to me I think maybe it's time to panic <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, right the other way. So yeah. you guys go ahead and yeah. pay. That's my clue yeah. to stay calm. Yeah, yeah. but if you guys are all calming, all calm, maybe then maybe it's time to panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're very philosophical, I would say. Would you call yourself philosophical? Um, yeah, sort of. I overthink, so oh, yeah. the heck, yeah. Plenty of time to overthink, so yeah. why not? Yeah, and I read a lot of, uh, <coughs> I read a lot of poetry. I read a lot of. Uh, Who do you read? Um, oh, a lot of American poets. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't know why, but I I do. But uh, a lot of Canadian poets also. I've got I've, oh, between. That's what I love about my Kindle is I can buy a whole bunch of books at right. a, at a less of a price. And uh, and I can read seven or eight or more at one time, just two poems here, two poems there, wow. and I read poetry every day. Um, That's fulfilling for you, then. Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. And I write, I read a lot of essays on uh, uh, literary criticism and craft. Uh, always learning, always learning. I I I I think I fear getting old and becoming this constantly the same not, not trying yeah and not trying new things and yeah. not not um even if if i'm getting demented it's like let's try a different <laughs> dimension today right. <laughs> you know, like, different universe please yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Have you ever met any uh, like famous authors that you oh, were yeah. the, but that you were a bit starstruck about? Uh, yeah, uh, I I've done um, uh, Karen Soli. I, I yeah, that was when I first met her. I was the first one on the Zoom, and I, did, I just didn't even know what to say. Right. Um, I ran into Mar. I, I've I've um, I ran into Margaret Atwood at a conference, oh, yeah. and we were both in the bathroom. And I couldn't say anything to her. And the only thing I could think of is, yeah, the first time I saw you, I was 15. And, 
and I was at a poetry reading and you were reading and I thought, oh, yeah, that's what she wants to yeah, hear. Yeah. That you're old. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know what to say to her. It was, that was kind of strange. Um, <laughs> Ellen Bass. And, oh, who's that? And she's American. She's okay. a really well-known poet laureate. Uh, Ellen Bass, Marie Howe, uh, John uh, uh, Sibley Williams. Um, these are American poets. Uh, uh, Kim Adonisio. They're really well-known wow. uh, American poets, and I really... Uh, Diane Seuss, I love their work. Some of them have passed, like Tony Hoagland. I love his work. I love his, his uh, uh, essays on craft. Um, Di Brandt here in uh, Canada. Uh, there's a lot of right. Wow. I just, yeah, I'm always. Even so, you would consider yourself fortunate then to have met these. Oh yeah. These folks and mm -hmm. uh, learn from them, I yeah. guess too. I yeah. would imagine, right? Yeah, I've done a. I, I Patrick Lane. I did a, a five day workshop uh, up around Frontenac, Frontenac, uh, uh, sure. County. Okay. Uh, it's uh, north. East of Kingston, I believe. All right. It's uh, there's a, a Winter Green Studios, and it's oh. an Echo Lodge, Eco Echo Lodge, and and uh, I did a five day, uh, a number of us up there, and uh, who else was it? I, oh, uh, George Elliot Clark. Well, I did a, a a weekend one with him at the University of Toronto. Uh, years of back. That's quite a, <laughs> yeah. Pardon me. That's quite a list. Yeah. So. That's. Uh, um, I, do you consider yourself fortunate in life? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Why? Is yes. That? Um. I because I could never. I I. I was very isolated mm -hmm. in my youth right. and very oppressed. Mm -hmm. Um, and. I couldn't see any of my dreams come true. I couldn't see a future. I could never see a future. And I've been married to the same man for 47 years. I wasn't supposed to be able to have any children. And I had a son who unfortunately died uh, in 2012 from a, a fentanyl overdose. But mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to be able to have any children. And I had this amazing man boy, man in my life for 29 years, and he was quite incredible and uh, quite charismatic. Mm -hmm. And I and I wasn't, like I had a gift for 29 years, mm -hmm. you know, so I've got uh, good friends. Um, I have a roof over my head. I've never thought I'd be traveling anywhere, and I've been to Europe. I've been, you know, went to Portugal and Spain for our anniversary nice. gift from my husband uh had a great time we've been to we've we spent we've spent time in arizona we've spent time in mississippi and florida oh and goodness. tennessee uh you know places like that we've uh uh been to st lucia we've been all over so, so when i'm learning yeah. to travel with jennifer lynn I, I give you a call and say yeah, have maybe, you been here and what yeah, can you tell yeah. me about it right yeah yeah, yeah. So the book is out, and this is uh, this is exciting because um, this is available locally at the bookkeeper here. Yes, in and and nationally. That, that's what I wanted to yeah. get to. Like nationally, yeah. let's yeah. for your first book. Yeah, and the fact that uh, uh, people thought this wasn't your first book. Yeah, that would be very flattering yeah. for you. And, oh yeah, uh, it was. To, to pull that off. Mm -hmm. So start to finish, from the mm -hmm. thought of I'm going to write this book to it's out there. Mm -hmm. How long? Um, it first started, and it was totally different and totally unfocused in around 2009 or 10. Wow. And then uh, Steve passed away in 2012, so I was going to stop writing and just concentrate on photography because mm -hmm. I knew Steve always had an eye for art and for photography and uh, always knew what questions to ask or what oh, yeah. to say. So I thought I'd go that route. And then he said, um, uh, he was telling friends, and I didn't know. He was boasting about my 
my poetry mm -hmm. to his friends. And I didn't find out till after he passed. So as soon as I found that out, um, I hadn't been writing that much poetry um, except co trying to concentrate on, on this manuscript and, uh, of course, like I said, stopped um, and just went at it. But it, it changed. It, the whole focus, everything changed. And then and I wrote, of course, a lot about grief. Mm -hmm. They were originally all in this book, and I took them out because I thought this book has a lot to do with uh, behaviors, dysfunctional behaviors, and uh, to me, he didn't belong in there. He belonged uh, in a, I had, at, by the time um, I was starting to send this out, I had enough for two books. Oh, wow. So I put, I have a, a manuscript that I'm, working on, starting to send out, called, uh, working title, The Realm of In-Between, and all the grief poems, and all the, most of, most of the, the uh, I do have a couple where, you, where he's in, but most of them are all in this other manuscript, along with nature and travel poems. Very nice. So, the best is yet to come. Yeah. For you and uh, congratulations on this book again. Yeah, thanks. I can't wait to dive mm -hmm. into it, uh, especially now what you've shared. Yeah. And thanks for sharing that uh, oh, you know, that very personal okay. yeah. story with your so, son. So, so well. really, as is as this book is probably, I'd say it really got going 2018, 2019. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So some time in the making yeah. for this. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I never know what to expect in these <laughs> interviews, and that was just so uh, very heartwarming, fun, and uh, uh, I'm getting a little choked up in there a little bit too. And that's oh, uh, wow. the personal side. Is, yeah. So thank you so much, Lynn, and thanks, Rob, for allowing us to talk to, <laughs> to Lynn. He had to step up when I got here, but yeah. um, let's we'll drop the links in the uh, the comments where you can purchase the book uh, online or. Go to the bookkeeper here in Sarnia. Mm -hmm. They've got it. That's a great way to support yeah, local Amazon as well. Has Amazon it. everywhere. So thrift books. Yeah, that's just so amazing yeah. that you've been able to pull that off like nationally. Yeah. That's pretty. I have cool. a I have a friend who says he says that it's in the states. You can get it at Walmart in the states. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, another reason to go yeah. with the publisher yeah. instead of self publishing. In Barnes, right? Nobles and Barnes. I think Barnes you and Noble. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can get it there. Fantastic. Uh, dyslexia. That's okay. Happening we knew what you meant right there. <laughs> thanks so much again, Lynn. Okay. Thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, really appreciate you being here. And of course, I always say click the like and the love button. But please <laughs> click the share button. And that way we can share Lynn's story and all the other folks that I interview here on the show. But as always, that's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. We'll see you next time right here on the show. Bye for now. See how easy that was? Yeah. <laughs>